If you're looking for a good slow burn show on Netflix to get invested in, this may be the show for you. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. As always, we're talking the brand new movie or show on Netflix and Katla just dropped today. It's an Icelandic show and it was getting some dark comparisons. You guys know one of my favorite shows on the platform. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. In Iceland, after a volcano has been erupting constantly for a whole year, our main character is looking for her missing sister who disappeared the day the eruption started. As her hope of ever finding her body is fading, the residents of the surrounding area start to have visits from unexpected guests. There might be something hidden under the glacier no one could have foreseen. The series is created by Baltazar Kormaker. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, the director of a movie like Everest and Adrift and Two Guns. So he does these grand action-heavy set pieces extremely well, but that's kind of where his focus has always been. It's been on the action and this rampant pace like Two Guns or something incredibly huge like Everest. Now, don't get me wrong, this series gets huge, and the landscapes, the cinematography, all of those things, it is visually stunning. Absolutely stunning. Even though the look and the feel of the show, even getting into the tone of it, is dark, and you can really feel that at points. A lot of the actual buildings that we go in here feel cramped at times, and you almost have this claustrophobic, like, okay, uh, I know a lot of it is just dialogue, but that's how he wants the show to come across until we go outside and we see this volcano and we see these beautiful landscapes. It's got to be one of the most stunning series of the year. So that's kind of where he's going with this. But speaking of action, I mean, it's in here. Absolutely. And when the intensity gets amped up and we start diving into this mystery, uh, the show gets really impressive. But for me, what captured my attention were the slower moments and the moments that move at a pace that not everyone's going to be on board with. And I see some watching this and maybe becoming a bit bored by how slow it moves, especially in the first few episodes. But I, for one, believe that is a very strategic way to build up this mystery and to really amp up that tension when we start getting our answers in the latter half of the season. And even though it may not be the most binge-worthy season of television I've ever seen, I got screeners from Netflix and I was able to binge this to a point. Um, I do believe it's one that will have so many people intrigued and on board and locked in. A lot of this is through the dialogue. We have this volcano that is causing a bit of a ruckus in this town and our first person appears covered in ash, and no one knows who or where or why that person is here. And then we start to discover that there is a connection, an unforeseen connection, that has everyone a little on their toes. Now, some people try to write it off as uh, a religious thing. God works in mysterious ways. It's a line we get, and I believe the second or third episode. Uh, others are thoroughly um, intrigued kind of like we are as an audience, by this mystery. And then, and I don't want to spoil anything in this video, maybe in another video, more things start to come from the volcano. And if you know the show, you know what I'm talking about. And it becomes this ongoing, and it feels like for the first four to five episodes, at the end of every episode, something else happens, and you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? And then you go to the next episode, and you start to dive a bit deeper into where that thing comes from. Uh, so... It is a very intriguing and engaging mystery, and even when it may start to lose you at a point in the middle of the episode because we're really diving deep into the dialogue and uh, where this person has been, where they are in their lives now, and what the connection is to our mystery, there's always something at the end of each episode that keeps you gripped and engaged, leaves you wanting more, and goes into the next episode. Now, when we get into the final few episodes of this season, that's when they start to connect all of the dots because... I was questioning what was actually happening for like four episodes, and eventually we get those answers, but every time something appears from that volcano, I'm like, all right, you guys better give me a good answer here because I am so locked in. If there is a reasonable payoff, this could end up being one of the best shows of the year. And while I don't know if everyone's going to be on board with the finale, they tie together loose ends, they really start to answer your questions, and I, for one, 
really enjoyed what it managed to give us. Now, there were elements of the show that I believe could have been constructed a bit better to put it on a category of dark. I, I definitely don't think it's on that level. And that's the obvious comparison because of the tone and the pacing and the mystery. Um, so it could eventually get there. I don't know if we're going to get a season two. Season one ties up loose ends in a really good way. But uh, I believe moments could have been constructed a bit better to keep maybe our investment on the level that it was at points. Because at times in the show, I'm really locked in on the edge of my seat. The intensity is high. At other points, I'm like, okay, it's a scene uh, with a lot of dialogue, and I don't know how much there is that is going to connect. Now, most of it does connect, but there were points where some characters are just kind of bantering or bickering just a little bit. Uh, those were really the only moments in the show that I wasn't invested. Again, my review is so positive, and I just didn't expect it to be this good. I knew it was interesting, I knew it was intriguing, but it all comes down to the execution, and uh, really happy with what this director was ever to do. I believe this is his magnum opus. I haven't used that word in a review. That's kind of cool. And I'll admit, I love a good, slow, haunting, Denis Villeneuve-esque mystery that combines elements of shows that just rock my world at the end of the day. Like a good slow burn. I do. When it's written in a way that is engaging, and I believe this show was really engaging, uh, an Icelandic series that kind of knocked my socks off at the end of the day. So the intensity is so high as it slowly builds this haunting mystery against this beautiful landscape. And before I drop my score, be sure to drop your thumbs up down below and let me know what is your favorite slow burn series on Netflix, and are you watching this one this weekend? My score is an 88 percent. Wow. One of my favorite series of the year thus far. I was kind of blown away by this show. So I'm interested to see what you all think. Be sure to get in that comment section and let me know, does this sound like something that would work for you? Some of the imagery is a bit scary when we're talking about younger audiences. I don't know if this is going to be one for you, uh, but if you like haunting imagery, if you like beautiful landscapes, my God, the cinematography is awesome. Uh, this may just be the show for you. So stay tuned to this channel. More Netflix reviews today and, of course, some tomorrow. Lots of stuff this week. Also, please let me know if you guys would like a spoiler review or an ending video on this series. Only if I get enough comments, I'll do it. Uh, otherwise, I just appreciate you for watching this spoiler-free video. All right, guys. See you soon.